Hi, everyone. We're going to get started. Um, I'm Hazel, um, and welcome to Finding Opportunities for Agritourism Development. Today, we're going to have three different presentations. Um, each is going to be 15 minutes long, and we're going to give you five minutes for questions between each of them. Um, just as a note beforehand, if you have questions, um, especially for the ones who are in person, our first one's going to be remote, uh, feel free to, when you have a question, stand in, um, behind this mic, and this way we can keep rolling um, and get to your questions quickly right after the presentations finish. Um, if you're joining us on Zoom, welcome as well. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to stick them in the Zoom chat, um, and we have someone moderating that as well. Um, so we'll make sure, try to make sure everyone's questions get answered, but if if it doesn't, we have the Hoover app, so um, we can continue the conversation there. Um, so our first presentation um, is differentiating the models of agritourism in a post-socialist countries, examples from Poland, um, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. Um, I'm going to butcher everyone's names, so I'm just going to let them introduce themselves in the video, and let's get started. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here. My name is Magdalena Kubalczerwinska, and I'm representing a team of geographers from Poland, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. I would like to introduce you to the topic of different models of agrotourism in post-socialist countries on an example of Poland, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. Agrotourism as a form of tourism attracts visitors from all over the world. These tourists are interested in relaxing in an active rural household where leisure is combined with the opportunity to learn about rural life and farm responsibilities. Although the idea of agrotourism is widely understood, the models of agrotourism farm systems that function in individual countries differ considerably. These differences may appear in management, organization, and functioning of the network of agrotourism farms. This results from differences in the proportion of the share between state or private capital in this sector. This topic of agrotourism models in post-socialist countries will be presented on an example of three countries with common history, but different paths of development. Poland, a country in the Central Europe, Belarus, a country in the Eastern Europe, and Kazakhstan in the Central Asia. Belarus and Kazakhstan were former Soviet Socialist Republics up to 1991 when they gained independence. Poland, on the other hand, was a satellite state of the USSR under the name the Polish People's Republic in the form of so-called People's Democracy. During the Cold War, the People's Republic of Poland belonged to the Warsaw Pact as a part of the so-called Eastern Bloc. The dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991 resulted in gaining the full sovereignty of its former republics. These three countries gained independence and stepped on the path of different political development. Poland is now a republic with a democratic system, Kazakhstan is nowadays a, Republican, a presidential republic, and Belarus is now an authoritarian presidential republic under the dictatorship, continuing a number of Soviet area policies, such as state ownership of large part of the state economy. But the transition of post-Soviet countries from a centrally planned economy to a market economy brought profound structural changes in the political, economic sphere, and significant social costs in all post-socialist countries. Diversification of growth factors through development of individual entrepreneurship represents one of the basic challenges that these economies face. Compared to the governments of countries in Central and Eastern Europe in the years between 90 to 2000, these of Central Asian countries currently seek factors of economic activation of the population in the development of individual agriculture and the service sector, which is also related to tourism. The above mentioned changes contributed both to the development of tourist activity of the population and created the basis for a market economy in rural tourism, mainly due to establishment of private land ownership through which rural residents could start managing their property on their own. Tourism is included in this group of factors which have or are now significantly contributing to the transformation of rural areas in post-Soviet countries since the 90s. 
the most intensive development of agritourism in the world took place in, in the 90s. In that time, the rapid development of the tourism services sector is in connection with agricultural activity is observed in Poland as well as in countries belonging to the Commonwealth of Independent States, including Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. The agrotourism development for rural areas relates mainly to the social, cultural, and economic sphere, but has a different tempo and differs in various factors of development, such as history, environment, natural values, cultural values, traditions of hospitality in rural areas, motivations to economic activity in rural areas, actors involved, and the future. Similarly, in Belarus, Poland, and Kazakhstan at present, the factors for the development of the rural tourism are seen in the increasing level of physical and social urbanization in the country that needs to change the lifestyle during holiday trips among city residents, the possibility of using ecologically clean agricultural production in the countryside, as well as the social needs for contact with the world of nature and experiencing its closeness. In response to political, economic, and social changes and transformations, particular models of agrotourism developed in post-socialist countries. On the example of three states, Poland, Belarus, and Kazakhstan, we will trace development of three models of agrotourism in post-socialist countries. Poland is the largest country in Central Europe, a former country of so-called Eastern Bloc. The Polish economy is currently the sixth largest in the European Union. Approximately 61% of the employed population works in services, 31 in industry and manufacturing, and the remaining eight in agriculture. The three market uh, transformations in the development of rural areas taking place in Poland from the beginning of the 90s changed the way in which farms functioned in the countryside towards non-agricultural activities. The search for that activities and the new source of income has contributed to the de dynamic development of agrotourism in Poland. In agrotourism farms, tourists are offered the opportunity to relax, learn about the, and participate in agrotourism activities and work on it. Tourist services are most often an additional or supplementary source of income and agricultural production is the basis of the family's livelihood. The model of Polish agrotourism is closest to the organizational and functional models known from Western Europe. The development of agrotourism in Poland is based on the principle of the free market and that the base of agrotourism farms is Poland is a manifestation of individual entrepreneurship of rural residents and is based on individual housing resources of the population and the social capital. Currently in Poland, there is no coherent single provision regulating the conditions for establishing, organizing, and operating an agrotourism farm. Farmers who want to provide tourist services are required to respect a set of regulations that define the legal framework of the functioning and organization of an agrotourism farm as an economic activity. The binding legal regulations in Poland grant taxes breaks as well as fiscal and insurance simplifications for farmers with active farms who want to run agrotourism activity. In the current legal system in Poland, it is not possible to develop a single legal act that regulates all aspects of the current system, including agrotourism farms. The lack of uniform legislation causes legal and functional chaos and the misuse of the name agrotourism farm by other accommodation facilities working in or operating in rural areas. This problem will appear also in all post-Soviet countries presented here to different extent. The process of formation of the tourism services system in Poland began in the early 90s. This system is based on working agrotourism farms, which have various relationships with entities that support their functioning in, the, in, in a direct or indirect way. Since the formation of the agrotourism market in Poland, a share of entities, agricultural advisory centers, Polish Rural Tourism Federation, Gospodarstwa Gościnne, agrotourism associations, local governments, has been observed in supporting development and functioning of agrotourism sector. From the beginning of the 90s, a gradual but consistent decline in the involvement of AACs in, a is in supporting the owners of agrotourism farms in their operation was observed. 
At the same time, the emergence in increase in the share of new entities, agro-tourism associations, local governments, and to a lesser extent, agricultural foundations in supporting agro-tourism in Poland is observed. A special role in the organization of agro-tourism in Poland is played by agro-tourism associations, which took the form of independent and democratic entities in the 90s. They act as a link between the regional and local authorities in the commune and the owners of agro-tourism farms. Agro-tourism associations are a constructive and organic element of the agro-tourism system. The current model of agro-tourism in Poland experiences some problems areas, which are listed here on the slide. We have to keep in mind that the development of the agro-tourism in Poland from the beginning of the 90s was chaotic without systemic guidelines and in the absence of a single body coordinating this development on the basis of trial and errors. Therefore, the organizational structure of agro-tourism in Poland currently is characterized by a lack of coherence and the lack of full coordination and management at the national level. Today, there are many entities to which agro-tourism farms can cooperate. The nature of the cooperation and the degree of familiarity of this cooperation depend on the owners of the farms. However, the multitude of choices comes down to the scattering of the directions of action and the instability of the entire system. Belarus is the most developed former Soviet Republic, the modern economy of which is based on agriculture and industry and is highly economically dependent on Russia. Cultivated areas cover almost 45% of the country. Forests are a key importance among the natural resources of Belarus. The largest population of European business lives here. Most of the unique and extreme valuable landscape of Belarus are concentrated in Polish and the Lake District. In 1989, there were signs of a serious crisis in domestic tourism of the Socialist Republic of Belarus. And with the collapse of the USSR, the unified tourist system of the former Belarusian Republic actually ceased to exist. In the period of development of domestic tourism and the beginnings of tourism business based on private initiatives began. In the years of the economic crisis, the first half of the 90s, a large part of the accommodation facilities collapsed due to financial reasons or was reprofiled, and the pace of creating new recreational buildings dropped significantly. From 1996 to the present day, mainly by the state, legal, organizational, economic, and social conditions are created for the development of tourism in the country in the form of regulatory intervention in the transformational model of the uh, Belarusian economy coordinated by the state, the development of the private entrepreneurship is now considered the main source of socioeconomic development. Despite the fact that according to the binding law, running accommodation facilities in the countryside offering up to 10 rooms is not formally classified as economic activity. The fact that, that the number of such activities in Belarusian society is increasing is a symptom of a broader social process, such as the development of individual entrepreneurship and the shaping of the economy market in this country. The quantitative and qualitative development of the tourism base providing accommodation services in the countryside on the commercial basis started in the 90s, with the start of the creation of a new economic order by the state. The characteristics of the process of shaping the market of accommodation services are dynamism, spontaneity in the sphere of individual entrepreneurship, and uncertainty of economic effects, which indicates the initial stage of its development. The model of the market for tourism services shows both similarities and differences from analogous processes in the development of world tourism in the Western European countries, including in Poland. The functional model of the world tourism is in Belarus corresponds primarily to the recreational needs of domestic tourists and the wider range of cognitive and recreational needs of the foreign tourists. Uh, the agro-tourism management model in Belarus has been organized into a centralized system with management bodies at the national level, subject to planning and organizational regulations pursuant to decrees and strategic documents for the development, research and management of tourism. This model specifies legal regulations and organizational conditions of agro-tourism in Belarus. Entities that can provide agro-tourism services in rural areas may be a large-scale agricultural organizations operating on a commercial basis or a private farms. 
The state strictly regulates the form of ownership of these objects, the legal status, and the scope of tax exemptions. The main organization focused on the development of agro-tourism in Belarus is the association Restinja Countryside. The main task include engaging citizens in rural and ecological tourism and strengthening their economic and social activity. Belagro Prombank occupies an important place in the institutional environment of rural tourism. This is the only bank in Belarus that implements the targeted program of preferential lending for the activities of rural accommodation facilities. The bank acts as an agent of authority in the implementation of state agricultural programs and implements the state's policy of, finan uh, of financing tourism activities. Currently, rural tourism in Belarus is developing three main functional forms. Creation of tourism villages built from elements of traditional rural agriculture on the basis of existing settlements. Creation of tourism and agricultural complexes of the basis of agricultural production cooperatives and leisure with accommodation and meals in rural houses and farms. This form of rural uh, tourism development is closest to the Polish functional and organizational model of agrotourism. The owners of the facilities in this case are private persons who offer tourist services to their guests on their farms. This model of agrotourism also faces several problems, but we have to Remember that the economic model of the country corresponds to the organizational model of rural tourism, which is highly centralized and de facto coordinated by the one organization, the association rents the rest in the countryside. It is assumed that the regional branches of this association and some local administration means are to create conditions for the development of rural tourism on a lower level. And finally, Kazakhstan, the largest country in Central Asia, an agri-industrial country with an economy largely dependent on revenues from the sale of crude oil. The 2014 crisis in the liquid fuels market led to a reduction in the real income of the state and its residents. It forced the authorities to look for new drivers of social economic development. The current strategies of the country point to agriculture as a potentially complementary factor of the country's economic growth. However, it is necessary not only to di diversify agricultural production <clears throat> and increase its efficiency, but also to develop craft and service sectors in rural areas in order to limit the technological and social degradation that continues since the 90s. Today, one of the priorities for rural development in Kazakhstan is to develop rural areas in the country toward the development of tourism function. The development of tourism services on a large farms is expected to increase the employment and income of farmers. Arguments in favor of the development uh, of rural tourism are based on the experience of developed countries and those of Central and Eastern Europe, including Poland. Agrotourism as an alternative to agriculture or as a complement to agriculture activity in the countryside is still a relatively new concept in Kazakhstan. The exact number of farms in Kazakhstan that provide accommodation and catering services can be estimated at the level of 1,300 in 2019. The most dynamic development of agrotourism occurs in the region of Almaty, around 400 facilities. The sector of agrotourism services develops in a way comparable to that of other developing countries. Its development proceeds in a spontaneous and chaotic way without any standardization of the scope and categorization of the extent of these services. In this stage, a significant part of its urban society has post agrarian characteristics and maintains close family and social relations with inhabitants of the countryside. In this model, immediate family, especially children, are the only source of economic capital of the agrotourism farm. The foundation for the development of the Kazakh agrotourism model can be drawn from its unique characteristic, a synergy of three service components, health created on the basis of natural and agricultural products with socially recognized medical and cosmetic values, ecological based on the aesthetic values and quality of the natural environment and cultural using the values and diversity of traditional forms of hospitality of ethnic groups who could adapt to the rules and principles of standardized tourist services.
The main problems visible in the current model of agrotourism in Kazakhstan mainly connected with the low recognition of agrotourism as a form of activity among Kazakh society and lack of the assumption that agrotourism can be used strategically as a factor in the economic activation of the rural areas in Kazakhstan. This model faces the lack of adaptation to the social realities and needs of the Central Asian countries due to the lack of formulation of strategic goals for local development and building a support system, organizational, financial, for the development of agrotourism services in the rural areas of this country. This short presentation was designed to familiarize the audience with the reasons for the diversification of agrotourism models in post socialist countries, based on the example of case studies from Poland, Belarus, and Kazakhstan, and highlighting the similarities and differences in these models. In Poland, agrotourism farms are private investments, often with long hospitality traditions organized within the farm and home of the owner. The host's family manages and services the agrotourism farm. The division of responsibilities between household members towards tourists depends on an internal contract within the farmer's family. A characteristic feature of Polish agrotourism is the use of existing housing and human resources. The agrotourism sector in Belarus is based on the same model. It differs in one distinct way. The process of creating and shaping basic accommodation services in the Belarusian village is subject to regulatory pressure from the state and other institutions. Currently, the developing Kazakh agrotourism model evises mainly in offering natural and agricultural products with socially recognized medical and cosmetic effects to tourists. A common element among the agrotourism models in all these countries are the reasons for the interest of tourists in agrotourism farms, which is include the attractiveness of each country's recreational space, which results from existing natural conditions and the development and accessibility. Among main differences between those three models of agrotourism, we can indicate management model, organization, and functioning of the network of agrotourism farms. This results from the differences in the proportion of the share between state or private capital in this sector. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello, everyone. So unfortunately, we're running behind and we don't have any time for questions. Um, but just a reminder, if you go into the Whova app, there's the Q&A. It's open until December 1st. Magdalena can be up, can be there answering all your questions virtually. Um, so keep the conversation going. Um, we're going to jump right into the next um, presentation, which is also, I think, um, is remote um, agritourism an opportunity for an in Hombe municipality in Mozambique? Hello, um, it's the person who's supposed to present this slide um, on Zoom. Would you want to spotlight yourself? Sorry about this. <laughs> You don't have the ERs. Um, do people have questions? Um, are you the next presenter? Okay, well, actually, Magdalena, are you still there? Um, Magdalena, if you're still there, well, we have a no-show. So if you want to, um, if you want to answer some questions or maybe add a little bit more to your presentation, we definitely have some extra time for you. Okay. Um, if anyone in the audience has questions, feel free to come up to the microphone um, and ask them in person. And again, online, if you would like to put it in the chat. Again, we're still um, on our first presentation. Um, our second presentation is not here. Yes. Can you come up to the microphone? Uh, 
Hello, thank you so much for your presentation. My name is Amelia and I'm with UVM Extension. Thank you for your really interesting presentation. And it's very impressive that you had so much research done on these three very different countries. Um, I just had a question in reference to one of the slides when you're talking about Poland and some of the problems with their agritourism model. Uh, one of the points was that it's dominated by women. And I'm curious, can you elaborate on that and what, what you meant by that? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, of course. Thank you for that question. Uh, first, I will refer to, to your comment that we had, I had a very great opportunity to work with uh, PhD students from Belarus and Kazakhstan who are, uh, who are working on their thesis and that team created a base for, for the research uh, on agrotourism in those three, uh, three stages. So uh, uh, also uh, uh, Irena and Ayman are not here, but I would like to thank you very much them for the contribution. And in terms of women uh, studies, I would like to uh, underline that uh, maybe misfortunate, it is called a problem. It's advantage. It's a great advantage. But in those three countries, in Poland, Belarus and Kazakhstan, that sector is dominated by women as uh, owners of the agrotourism farms or uh, co-owners, especially it is visible in Poland, where women are um, approximately in 44 percent are the owners of agrotourism activities. So the agrotourism activities is signed to their name or they are co-authors. In total sum up, women are um, uh, uh, running 75% uh, of all agrotourism farms in uh, that country run or co-run with their spouses. Uh, so that's not a problem. It's it's advantage because mostly that uh, women uh, social capital uh, as kindness, as patience, as uh, uh, other values that come up from the, from, from the character of women work, women work and women uh, taking care of the family is translated and transferred to uh, the service that is um, uh, provided to, uh, uh, to tourists. So uh, in Poland, as well as in uh, Belarus, we still see and we see as a value of agrotourism activities that family, uh, that, uh, family relations within the family with the owners but also to tourists in Kazakhstan it is not visible as much uh, mostly because uh, the um, uh, mostly because the, the the history that there is so much uh, society who lives now in uh, uh, urban areas and they are coming back to rural areas uh, to their families and friends uh, it's not treated as an agrotourism it is not treated as an agrotourism relation and uh, tourists who are trying to discover uh, the, the agrotourism farms in Kazakhstan are mostly from other countries. And that relations are not such visible, that family, fam, family relations are not such visible in the Kazakh model of agrotourism. In Poland and Belarus, women as actually can be uh, called a power of agrotourism, the adv advantage of agrotourism activity. Awesome, thank you so, so much, Magdalena. Um, so, Helsio, are you here um, right now for the second presentation? Um, I think our second presenter may have just joined. Hello? Uh, yes, perfect, thank you, you're here. All right, we're gonna put on your presentation and get started, thank you. I, okay, great. You'll put on, you'll put the presentation there or? Oh, great. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Elsio. I'm from Mozambique. And uh, uh, please, could you start the presentation? The first slide, please. Oh, OK, great. Yes, uh, back, 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 please. Yes, this is. Sorry, uh, I, I didn't send the video, but I hope to present in this way also. And I hope that you could also 
um, view everything on, on this side. My name is Elsio. I'm from uh, Eduardo Mondlan University in Mozambique. And I'm uh, a lecturer in uh, Ike School of Hospitality and Tourism. And we start a study to, under to understand the approach between agriculture and tourism. And then we study the municipality of Inyambani to see if uh, we could find opportunities for develop agritourism. Next, please. Yes, uh, in Mozambique. Uh, no, no. Second slide, please. Okay, in Mozambique, uh, the government uh, uh, approved in the strategy of development agriculture and tourism as uh, uh, main sectors for development. And we have a, a lake of studies about how these two areas could Slide or is invisible, sir. Hello, sorry? Slide is invisible. Invisible? Yes, sir. I'm not managing the slides, probably the, the, the organization. But I will continue because Sorry, I have a few sir. time. And if, if uh, the person could uh, follow my, my, my speech, please. Yes, and in this study, we want uh, to uh, understand how we could uh, diversify, divers, made the diversification of tourists offer for tourists because Inyambani is a, is a municipality with a high potential for develop a, a sun, a, a tourism on, on beaches and diving and other type of tourism. But we intend uh, on that, that study to, uh, to bring a comparison of how we could also put agritourism as a, a, a type of tourism that tourists could uh, have in the in day holidays. Next slide. Uh, the last slide was to show you where is Mozambique, but uh, I think that you will have these presentations. We are in the, in the southern part of Africa. Mozambique is a, a Portuguese country, and uh, yeah, this is our, this 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 picture show the main uh, products that we uh, the tourists found in Mozambique. But we want to bring the agritourism as one opportunity also for the municipality and from the people. This, uh, municipality. Next slide. And the approach that we bring is that to involve communities and on business because uh, to we attend the uh, GD, GD, uh, global uh, sustainable goals, one of the things that we must uh, is involve all stakeholders that have opportunity to integrate the. Uh, uh, the potential of natural resources and uh, do and participate in the business sector. And so we think that uh, the community, the involvement of community uh, are important and who is doing agriculture in this municipality are communities and not a big uh, companies as in other countries. And we work on this study with uh, uh, association of agricultures to understand the, the capacity to uh, to provide the agriculture on the um, uh, associations. Next slide, please. And this uh, map show in the red uh, circles, the areas in the municipality that we found that has potential to, to practical the agriculture. And uh, is uh, the next, please. And uh, we found also that are in these areas where uh, the associations are doing uh, the work of agriculture. Next, please. And these are the 23 associations uh, that are working. And we see that the power of agriculture in, the, in, the, in this municipality because around uh, 500 members are working in agriculture and they are not uh, working, the majority of them, they are not working also with uh, uh, bringing value to the agriculture like uh, a tourism uh, as a complementary activity for they to provide and increase 
uh, the, the revenues of the, the work that they do. Next. This is uh, some samples that what is produced in, in, in Yambani and that the, the tourists could come and uh, be part of the activities with the communities on, uh, on um, uh, plants and then also to collect the products from the, from the fields and also uh, cook on these uh, associations. Next, please. Next slide. Yeah, also our pictures from uh, the, the areas that we show. This is a, a sample of uh, activities that we try to stimulate in associations to bring people to see if they are able to uh, receive tourists and then uh, establish a communication and show what they do. And this was a, a part of the a project that you could uh, found in this website, but unfortunately is in Portuguese. If you could see the documents that we produce and, and we do uh, in our work field and in our research, because this is a part of a, a big project that probably I will explain when we are interacting. Next, please. This is also a picture of uh, food, local food that uh, we teach the community, uh, uh, this community to provide to, to, to foreigners that visit the, municip the municipality. Uh, today, uh, have experience on, 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 on what the, the associations are and transforming in food. Uh, and the majority of what you see is from the community and they, cook uh, there are some products that they they have, have to 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 buy in in the market but the majority we teach them we work with them to try to create a, a, a eco, agrotourism route in this municipality next so i i'm showing uh, that uh, here that uh, the activity, sorry, this is in English, but the first one is agriculture. That, that is the main activity that uh, all associations, associations are working. The second, they work with uh, animals. Uh, uh, then uh, you see here that only one work on tourism reception on his association. Next. So it's important to put another associations working with uh, uh, tourism because there is a potential to bring people to know the local culture, the local way of production. And now I'm presenting some of the, the, the weakness of these, uh, these associations. The first one is the age of the members. Many uh, young people are not uh, participating on this uh, type of activity in the agriculture. The young people are, are running out from, from, from the fields and uh, only the, the, the oldest people is, uh, are still working and we think that it, this will be a problem for the sustainable of agriculture and so from, from, from the tours. Next, this, uh, the school level of these people is very low. As you see, uh, the majority of these people is a, a, between basic and no studies. And this is bad because the new te technician, the, the new uh, tools for produce the new tools for sell and uh, they will not uh, no understand because they the majority don't have a, a, a skills to to work on tours because tours is a, 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 a sector with uh, where people need some specific skills to receive people and this will be important to increase the teaching of these people uh, next Uh, also, we, 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 we study the type of the houses to see if they are uh, 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 available to receive uh, tours. And the, the majority of the, the members of these associations, they have uh, 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 conditions to receive. And this is important that they have a, a type of houses that are locally. This is something that could be attractive for the, for the tourists. Next, please.
Also about the commercialization and when we think in, in a, a new ways of selling, uh, many, many uh, uh, farmers are doing your sales uh, using cell phones. And we see that the majority of uh, members, uh, they have uh, uh, conditions to use cell phone, but you see in the right that this majority don't use internet as uh, a tool to, uh, to 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 share the information about the the agriculture products that they they produce and also uh, they could use in the future to to promote the spaces as agritourism hotspots. Next. Uh, 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 is it possible to see in this slide that uh, the majority are not using uh, not, none of the uh, social medias that are common in our society in, in our days, mainly in, here in, in, in our country? A few are using Facebook and WhatsApp. Next, please. So these uh, are the proposal of the, the two routes that we, uh, in this study, we are proposing for, for, for tourists, eight hours of visit of, of route for each route. And this starts from the main points you see in, in the, I don't know if you are seeing my, my, uh, my mouse, uh, but in the left, the main points came from the two beaches that are most uh, the hotspots of the municipality through the associations and the, the, in, the, in, uh, the, in the left, they come from the town to the, the associations where uh, agriculture associations where the agriculture is promoted in our days. Next. So we made, uh, uh, um, we, 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 compare the agrotourism, the courses that we have to promote the roads that we showed the photos, and we compare with other uh, roads that are uh, available at the, the municipality. And we see that the price in USD are less than the others, like diving, cultural heritage, uh, and uh, ocean safari, for example. And there's a big potential to the associations promote these uh, uh, the road for uh, uh, increase uh, and diversify the type of activities that they develop in our days. Next, please, and I think that is the last. So some conclusions, uh, in Yambani, uh, as you see, has a potential to become a tourism uh, spot in South region of Mozambique. Uh, but uh, these associations needs to be trained to promote the agritourism. And I, I think that the university and other kind of uh, in, um, company schools uh, uh, give us support for these communities and these associations to promote the development of agritourism as one alternative for uh, tourism offer. Uh, some financial to do improvements in infrastructure are required. And there's a, a very struggles in uh, infrastructure on these associations, roads, uh, some don't have energy, uh, the majority has water, but uh, also toilets and good uh, um, facilities for, uh, for sleeping are, are required in these in this, uh, associations. Uh, I think that local universities could help on this training and young people may be involved more in agriculture activities if you want a sustainable agritourism activity. Thank you very much for your attention and sorry for, for don't send the video. Uh, this is my first time working in a, a, a kind of event in that, that type. I, uh, before COVID we are doing presential events and now I'm learning to participate in this kind of events. Thank you. I'm available for share and discuss with you the study. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we're running behind. So again, no questions unless something changes. Um, but Huva app, Q&A, you guys know the drill. There will be ways to answer questions until December 1st. Um, so just go into your Huva, Huva app, click the Okay, great. And keep going. And Celestia will be there to answer questions. So thank you so much. That was a great presentation. Um, moving on, um, 
we have our next session, which is agritourism, um, development policies and regulations in Italy, the US and South Africa. Um, we have Giovanna Sachi, uh, Saki, sorry, I, pronunciation is not my strong suit, assistant professor at the Free University of Bolzano. So thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Giovanna Sacchi, and uh, I come from the Free University of Bozen, Bolzano, where everything started in 2018 because the World Congress of Agriculture was held there the first time. And this research is actually the result of the cross pollination Lisa Chase was talking about because after the um, World Congress, some authors of this uh, uh, research decided to start collaborating. So I joined them and I'm going to present you uh, this research. Sorry. Um, Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, so next please. So during my presentation, I will go to a brief introduction and then I will uh, define the main aims of the research, the methodology we have applied to um, then define the results on the three case studies country, Italy national level and South Tyrol, which is our territory for the local level and the USA national level and Vermont as a local uh, case study and South Africa just the national level you will discover why to uh, end up with some conclusions next please can you please tell us what South Tyrol is I'm sorry I don't know. the what your your area within Italy South Tyrol it's the very northern part of Italy which is an, an autonomous province uh, uh, and it's quite interesting because uh, uh, it's a border uh, province uh, um, and we speak both Italian and German, uh, the others actually uh, speak uh, Italian and German, and it's a mountain areas where the Dolomites uh, are, you know, the yes. Alpine region of the Dolomites. So as for the uh, premises, uh, um, first of all, sorry. <laughs> Is it? Um, first of all, uh, we started uh, by considering that uh, nowadays agritourism represents one activity for farm diversification on several uh, way, in several ways. First of all, because it represents extra income for farmers, but also because of the delivering of several services. Uh, for instance, the land, landscape beauty conservation, but also for the delivering of environmental externalities to both rural community, but also the whole society. Society. So um, in recent years, agritourism has dramatically grown in many countries worldwide. Nevertheless, little is known about the implementation and also the actual extent and the effectiveness of various public and private measures driving agritourism development. And also, um, the majority of research in academic literature focus in particular on Western countries. So starting from these premises, uh, next please, we decided to try to provide a qualitative overview and a kind of comparison of the development support schemes in both terms, public and private, um, driving agritourism activities development. And the focus in, is on these three very, very different countries, also in terms of the um, different uh, uh, development of uh, agritourism, of course. Next, please. So we decided, sorry. Yes, we decided to apply a um, multiple case study uh, research starting we developed a study proposition based on our general aim then we defined some study question based on the uh, possibility on the um, existence or absence of public uh, support schemes or private support schemes and if there are if there are which are these uh, uh, private and public support schemes at the national and also regional and provincial level uh, then we decided to link uh, the data to our preposition, investigating the current public and private uh, measures. Uh, and we refer to several sources of information, for instance, national, regional, provincial regulatory repositories, but also the Italian Rural Network, which is a very active association um, dealing with uh, rural development issues and also, of course, agritourism. Then we refer also to 
Professional, Agritourism Association, and National, Statistic, National and Regional Statistical Institute. Finally, we defined some criteria for interpreting uh, our study findings, uh, starting from the uh, definition of the sector and the activities admitted in the three different uh, um, uh, study uh, case studies countries, uh, the existence or absence of agritourist policies and regulation national, regional, provincial level, and then the existence of private sector support activities uh, at national and regional level, and if there are any public subsidies. Uh, finally, we tried also to define which is the agritourism manual growth rate for all countries. Next, please. So uh, you will see a kind of unbalanced um, results because in Italy, we started 40 years ago um, in uh, regulating uh, such uh, agritourism activities. And also Italy, as you know, is part of the European Union. So we have to refer also to European Union regulation. And the first one is the most important uh, um, policy regulating uh, agritourism activities, the European Agricultural Fund for Rural Development, which supports sustainable and responsible tourism in rural areas. And there are some uh, measures dealing especially with agritourism. Please. In Italy, the first law recognizing uh, agritourism was enacted in uh, the 85. Next, please. But currently, uh, the uh, regulation dealing with agritourism uh, was uh, issued in 2006 uh, and it's called Discipline of Agritourism. And uh, this law delegates the competence of agritourism activities to the regional, um, to the regions and provinces of Italy. So currently we have 21 regional and provincial laws regulating agritourism businesses. As far as taxation of that point is concerned, Agritourism is subject to a favorable regime governed by this law, uh, the Article 5 of this law issue in 1991. And uh, according to this law, the income from agritourism and the um, uh, revenues from education and social activities are not included uh, in farmer income, while uh, they are subject to a flat rate determination. Uh, equal to 25% of income net without value that net, value that tax. So next please. Um, here you can see a picture of the evolution of agritourism company in Italy in between 2007 and 2019, and you see a positive trend of uh, increasing companies. Uh, the majority of agritourism are based in Tuscany and follow the uh, South Tyrolean province in uh, top, uh, uh, top right. Um, and so in this range of time, uh, we witnessed to an increase of 38% of uh, agritourist companies for a total economic revenue of 1.5 billion euros in 2019. Next, please. Um, in South Tyrol, uh, which is the um, local um, region, provincial focus of our research, we found in particular this provincial law number seven issued in 2008, which supports farm holidays uh, in order to promote progress in rural areas and the retention of farmers, multifunctionality in agriculture, and so on. It, um, the activities included uh, um, are catering, accommodation, of guests, uh, and since we are in a mountain area, there are many activities that agric agricultural entrepreneurs care, can carry out as uh, hiking, uh, um, but also uh, um, sports activities uh, and cultural activities. And the main goal of this law is to enhance the rural areas and the cultural assets. Also, next please, there are several uh, um, possibility of uh, accessing subsidies uh, in South Tyrol, and these subsidies can support new construction, conversions, but also renovations of, of farm buildings uh, for a maximum of 50% of the eligible cost for grassland farms and 30% for farms with fruit growing, viticulture, or special crops. These subsidies are paid for a maximum amount of eligible expenditure over a 10-year period, for a maximum amount of 80,000 um, 80, uh, euro. 
The eligibility depends of uh, the uh, activity carried out. Of course, the agricultural activities uh, must prevail over the farm holidays and the um, farmers uh, must not have other tourism activity. And this is the trend in South Tyrol of the um, overnight states uh, um, in the territory, you see a positive uh, growing trend, in, um, except for the 2020, which is the pandemic year, of course. Next, please, as for the states, um, um, in this case, policies and regulations regarding agritourism uh, are enacted at the level of the state, country, or local level, rather than at the national level. And currently, 39 out of 50 states in the, state, in the United States uh, enacted agritourism law. Here you can see the uh, situation, the, the uh, current situation. So the green states uh, have an agritourism law, while the orange states uh, as proposed uh, legislation, but there are no existing laws. And the blue states uh, as recently proposed legislation while there are some existing laws. Next, please. Um, for the local case, uh, we focus on Vermont and uh, uh, we found uh, uh, these two acts uh, dealing with agritourism activities. Uh, the first one uh, um, allows farm to diversify in services and revenue streams while increasing their ability to market agricultural products uh, and agricultural experiences. While the second act, the 31, uh, addresses the concerns of farmers uh, uh, related to liability for visitors and events. Um, but currently there are not specific uh, subsidies. Uh, um, there, is, there is not the possibility to access specific subsidies in the states uh, for who is running agritourism activity. Uh, so for Italy and the states, I focused uh, for timing uh, reason, just to um, uh, public policies, but of course uh, Italy and also the states uh, have many um, private uh, uh, actors dealing with uh, agritourism and driving and helping uh, agritourism activities. But uh, we fo I focus just uh, on those for the South African case. Please, next. Uh, because uh, in South Africa, the agritourism, it's a relatively new concept uh, and there are no agritourism public uh, support schemes. Uh, even though there are some uh, organization, private organization, which are mm, guiding and driving uh, these uh, activities, uh, starting from Agritourism Africa. And also depending on the sector, we have, for instance, for the wine sector, the Wine and Agricultural Ethical Trade Association, the Shira South Africa, wine, Wines of South Africa, and so on. For the bird watching activity, we have Bird Life South Africa, but still, uh, in the, the country is uh, wi it's witnessing kind of flourishing momentum, but there are no agritourism public, agri public support schemes and uh, commercial farmers uh, cannot receive uh, uh, any government su governmental subsidy. So to conclude, to uh, give you kind of uh, outlook of what we found, um, we, and um, coming back to the criteria for defining uh, uh, our finding, uh, we see that in Italy we have a unique definition for agritourism activities, while in the US uh, it depends on the different states, uh, and uh, in South Africa there are several definitions, but none of them are officially recognized at the central, at central level. Uh, just in Italy we have uh, some policies and regulations at national level, while at local regional uh, level, uh, we have uh, um, agritourist policies in both Italy and the US, while we don't have any in South Africa. Uh, we have, of course, private uh, sector support activities uh, in all uh, uh, three case studies countries. Uh, um, and then um, Mm, the public subsidies, we, we were able to find some data just for the uh, Italian case study. So there are about 2 million euros per year. 
the amount of subsidies. Uh, and uh, as uh, for the agritourism growth rate, uh, we see that in Italy, we, in between of 2007 2019, we have a growth rate of uh, more than 38%. In the States, in between of 27 and 20, um, um, uh, 17 uh, plus 22 percent uh, based uh, on estimation of uh, a research we refer to uh, we found that in south africa the growth rate of agritourism activities is about eight percent so to draw some uh, conclusion uh, let's please um, we found that different approaches uh, can succeed uh, in fostering and promoting agritourism in uh, different uh, territories. Uh, of course, Italy started 40 years ago, so we have a well-developed agritourism sector based on a well-structured structured public super system, and the sector can benefit in these terms from specific public schemes and laws for its successful development. South Africa from its side demonstrated that association for promoting other tourism can be uh, really important where specific policies and public support is lacking. And uh, in the US, uh, the conclusion is that the lack of consistent regulations creates a kind of an even playing field where farms uh, uh may perceive a more supportive environment in some states while others may feel uh, burdened by deregulation so this is a very very general uh, um, uh, overview of what we found but if you are curious to deepen this topic next please we were able to public uh, research also by the help of other two scholars who were uh, previously not included from south africa uh, Christel Van Ziel and Professor Piet van der Mer, because it, we struggle a lot to find data on uh, South Africa. So we ask for their help. And there you can find also um, the private um, uh, association dealing with agritourism in, in both Italy and the US, and much more insights uh, uh, in, the, in this publication. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question, I'm available and here in presence, uh, I will be glad to answer to any question. Thank you. Yeah, I recognize that um, we're running a little over, but you guys have a 20 minute break right now. So if you wanna stay um, and people are on Zoom and wanna come up to the microphone to ask questions, great, just come up to the microphone so people on Zoom can hear you as well. Okay, thank you. Just a short question too. Yes. You mentioned the, the the EU regulations, is some of the funding actually coming directly from the EU rather than the Italian government? No, actually the EU regulation, Italy has to deal, of course, with uh, a regulation issue at the European level. That found, uh, I show you, it's actually a way to um, give subsidies to re uh, national uh, member states. So we have to pass through this regulation uh, and then through the uh, national level, which delegate to regions. <laughs> So there are many steps, sure. yeah, but uh, we have many uh, kind of uh, subsidies uh, to rural development in general terms and to sustainable uh, tourism. So then agritourism can access, uh, uh, farmers running agritourism activities can access several different uh, funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, my name is Caroline Miller from Scottish Agritourism. Um, we're in a process just now having unfortunately left the EU. Um, we didn't want to do that, but anyway, um, we've left the EU and we've got a new agricultural bill coming in Scotland. Um, we're trying to speak to our government about putting agritourism into some of our legislation. So I just wondered about, um, do you think there's a direct correlation between agricultural law and legislation and economic growth? Yes, of course, but uh, I think that uh, the mm, a very important point, uh, at least in Italy, uh, is to um, consider the um, peculiarity of different uh, regions and territories. That's why we have uh, so many regulations, but uh, this is uh, for sure a matter of uh, economic uh, growth as well. 
um, in South Tyrol, I have another presentation, but uh, uh, agritourism represents a very, very important uh, sector for the uh, income generation. So uh, yes, I, I do believe it. I, did, I don't know if I answered, but I'll speak to you. <laughs> yes, definitely. Even because I'm curious about uh, uh, Scottish and uh, British situation on after Brexit. I don't know. I don't know what's at what level now you are dealing with your government. But oh, it's a good, good opportunity. To speak yeah, definitely. Thanks. Thank you too. I don't know if I unrushed you. Any other questions? Any questions on Zoom? No? Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Big round of applause. Thank you. Thanks.